to Nixon. Floating currency system opens a play on currency. Carter. Mandatory De- Deregulation Act leads to excessive 35% interest rates. Uh, that's when the loans are called in. Um, you got Reagan with TRAs and Clinton. Massive deregulations that led directly to the toxic assets and lifted the oversight, which led to the problem, of course, we see today. Well, luckily, they have a solution. Uh, we're, here, we're here to head that off and maybe supplant our own answers and solutions. Charles Goyette with me on the program today. His new book, The Dollar Meltdown, the website, thedollarmeltdown.com. And I want you to tell everybody about this book. I'm really excited about it. Charles, thanks again for being with us. Great to be on your show, Jack. Yeah, and thank you for uh, telling people about the dollar meltdown. It's really, you know, everywhere you turn now, you see the signs of this. Uh, You see gold having penetrated $1,000 an ounce this year with uh, oil knocking on the door of $80 and and uh, having done so back in 2008, in fact, oil at, uh, at $147 a barrel. So you've got all the signals that you need. The signals are out there, and people need a little guidance and, and a little advice uh, on, on how to protect themselves and their families. That's my view, is that people's primary responsibility is to protect themselves and their family from this currency crisis and to profit from it, to get ahead of the curve, to know how these things unfold, because as you just pointed out, these, there, there's nothing new about a currency crisis. It's just it's new in the, in the uh, memories of people alive today. Well, as you mentioned, the huh, ignorance of the people is, is – I never underestimate that, Charles. And you know, we've got people out there that think that if we had $50 a gallon gas that, that we could save the world somehow. I mean, they, they just don't get well, the economic implications they, of all they, of this, that their food will cost – Ten times more. Yeah, if that's they, the case. they may not have to wait too long for their fifty dollar a gallon gas. Well, <laughs> I I have my own take on that. I'm not going to go too far into that. Here's a question for you. Uh, it has been supposed that when the dollar rallies, the market will crash. So mm-hmm. here's our choice: we got a strong dollar, the market crashes, or we have a strong market and the dollar sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any truth to that? Well, you're displaying your typical great amount of sophistication about these things, Jack. Uh, it, it can certainly happen. There is no doubt that the stock market is uh, is, is in a uh, short-term bubble here that has been has been orchestrated by the uh, the Federal Reserve and the United. It's all been driven by hot money created by the Federal Reserve and uh, uh, the way that they have uh, engineered low interest rates for the time being. You don't get them. You don't get low interest rates when you buy a house today. You don't get low interest rates when you pay your credit card. But uh, the banksters get nice low interest rates. They borrow uh, they borrow money from uh, the Fed at really low rates, and then they can go speculate elsewhere in uh, the in uh, the stock market. And uh, so they they've persuaded uh, the American people to believe this is a, a real bull stock market when it's only another engineered bubble yes. by the Fed. Yeah, absolutely. And when does the other shoe drop on that? I, I'm predicting. Somewhere after Mr. Obama allegedly gets reelected in the selection of 2012, because, you know, the, the, he really needs this. And if they can engineer, if, they, if he's going to be the face and the used car salesman for the New World Order, Charles, they've got to get some success for this guy. It's been, it, it's been hard to come by for him. Uh, you know, don't they need to kind of keep this fake fiat bubble going at least until that election happens? And then, just like it happens every eight years, what's happened the last couple of presidencies and the shifts of power here, the other shoe drops. Well, somebody asked me uh, the other day, said, why, you know, why don't governments just declare bankruptcy? And the answer is what, what you have alluded to. They would bring the temple around them crashing down. The, it is it, they have got to keep the game going on it at virtually any cost, including the destruction of the currency. They've got to keep the game going on because it's their it's their uh, lease on life. It's the it's the very power that drives them. And if they you know if they were to have a uh, a, a, a sudden conversion to honest money and so on, they lose they lose their power. And they're not these, that these, these these politicians, these Republicans and Democrats, are driven only. By the acquisition of power, think how different that is from from our founding. The political conversation today, from morning until night, whether whether you speak with Republicans or Democrats, is entirely about the acquisition of power, the uh, conglomeration of power, the the the, uh, the use of power to reward supporters, the 
uh, divvying up the results, plundering people to pay, and and more. It's all about the exploitation of power. And you go back to our founding, and the conversation was very, very different. It yeah. was about about uh, power as a danger, as a threat. It was it was George Washington who said, "Government is not reason." It is not eloquence. Government is force. And like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So they spent their time in the, the, the initial design of this country deciding how can power be checked? How can power be divided against itself? How can power be limited and minimized? And they did a good job. And today the conversation is about how can it be exploited? How can it be grown? How can it be grabbed? Well, it looks like Hamilton won the argument, unfortunately. It, it does. You know, uh, because that's what Jefferson said. If we let these central banks come in, our children and our children's children will be slaves. And it kind of looks like that's happened. But let's uh, <clears throat> let's get to some answers here for our audience. Uh, the Dollar Meltdown dot com is the website. The Dollar Meltdown is the book. Charles Goyette is our guest today. Can we use this to our benefit? Can we somehow use <clears throat> this in, impending catastrophe to to get through to people what viable solutions look like? and shift the balance of power away from the Doombergs of the world, away from the George Soroses of the world and the, and the Rockefeller Trust, and into the hands of the people. How can we do that? Well, maybe so. Uh, sometimes there's a good outcome to these sort of crises. I, I mean, I, when, when you talk about uh, multinational or global currencies and the euro and, and uh, the Amero and things like that, I, I am willing to go out on a limb and say after this calamity, as severe as it is likely to be, it will be another generation or two before you're able to successfully persuade people to hold on to uh, irredeemable paper currencies, that, that people will begin to wake up at least for a while until the same old lessons have to be learned again, that they will begin to awaken to uh, the nature of, of uh, real money, uh, tangible wealth, and uh, promises printed on a piece of paper with nice fancy scrolls. Dependable unit of commerce. Do we have that much time? <laughs> 